Hello and welcome to the Titus Time Out podcast. I'm Jenny Abney Sivy, and today I'm going to cover when you should use chilled beams. In my podcast, What is a Chilled Beam? I discuss the difference between active and passive chilled beams and briefly discuss why you want to use them. Just as a refresher, chilled beams decouple the sensible and latent loads of a space. The sensible load is handled by water through the chilled beam, and the latent load is handled by airflow. In an active chilled beam, it's handled through the chilled beam, and in a passive chilled beam, it's handled by a a separate system. Let's move this up and out of the way and look at this. This circle represents the heat capacity of water, and this little circle represents the heat capacity of air. The heat capacity of water is almost 3,500 times the heat capacity of air. Saying that another way, a one inch pipe carries the same amount of energy as an 18 by 18 inch ductwork. So for this reason, we're seeing a lot of chilled beams being specified. And so I want to talk a little bit more about when you would want to use them. The basic idea behind chilled beams is that the water side handles the room temperature, which is the sensible load. and the air side handles the humidity, which is the latent load, and the ventilation air. One of the big benefits behind a chilled beam system is that it uses less airflow than a conventional VAV system. So let's look at an example. So let's look at a space that is 60 by 40 and it's got some windows. So this is 2,400 square foot. And let's say we've got 30 people occupying this space. Now let's compare how much airflow you would need for a traditional system versus a chilled beam system. Now if you had a traditional VAV system, you'd have about 1 CFM a square foot, so you'd have 2400 CFM in this building. If you have a chilled beam system, you would at minimum have enough airflow to handle the ASHRAE 62.1 ventilation rate. And ASHRAE states that you have 5 CFM per person and for this application, 0.12 CFM per square foot. You add all that up and you come up with 438 CFM in this space. So looking at best case, For a traditional system, you would need 2,400 CFM, but for the chilled beam system, you'd only need 438 CFM. So that's a a big difference in airflow that you need to provide. Now, in reality, you're probably not going to use 438 CFM because you have to handle the latent load as well. So what you would actually use is the higher CFM requirement between the latent load and the ASHRAE 62.1 ventilation requirement. So you get the biggest benefits from chilled beam systems when your sensible load is significantly higher than your latent load. Specifically, you want the sensible heat factor, which is the sensible load divided by the total load, to be greater than 0.7 or greater than 70% sensible load. So let's do a simple example using our 60 by 40 space. Draw our space back here and our 30 people. And let's say the loads of the space are the following. 1.25 BTU per square foot for people. Lights add 0.9 watts per square foot, which is 3.1 BTU. Equipment like computers, copiers, etc., 1.5 watts per square foot, which is 5.1 BTU per square foot. And a 250 BTU per square per foot perimeter load, which comes to 13.6 BTU per square foot. So now let's calculate the sensible and latent loads. So the latent load is from the 30 people, and per ASHRAE, they're 200 BTU per person, which gives us 6,000 BTU of latent load. Now the sensible load is the 13.6 BTU per square foot times the 60 by 40 space, which gives us 32,640 BTU. 
Now we can calculate the sensible heat factor, which is 32,640 sensible load divided by the total load, which is 6,000 plus 32,640, and that equals 0.84, which makes it good for a chill beam application. So now let's figure out how much airflow we need. To figure out how much we need to handle the latent load, we'll need to know some information. So let's say our space is going to be 75 degrees and 50% humidity, which if you look this up on a psychrometric chart, you'll see has a dew point of 55 degrees and a humidity ratio of 65 grains per pound of dry air. Okay, so I ran out of a little room there, but we'll move on. Let's say the supply air is 55 degrees with a 51 degree dew point, which gives it a humidity ratio of 55 grains per pound. Now we can calculate the airflow needed to handle the latent load, which is 6,000 BTU divided by 0.69 times the difference between the space humidity ratio and the supply air humidity ratio, 65 minus 55, and that equals 870 CFM. We calculated earlier that the CFM needed for the outside air ventilation requirement is 438 CFM. So you can see from this, you need to supply 870 CFM to handle the latent load, which will also handle the ventilation requirement. Now look down here, you can see our sensible load is 326400 BTU, and we just calculated our airflow at 870 CFM, and that's how we'll select our chilled beams. But we're already over seven minutes now, so I think we'll select chilled beams in next week's podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and thanks for taking a time out with us.